Okay, everybody, today we're starting off in Illustrator and then we're moving into InDesign afterwards. So going into the document creation, we're just gonna make a eight and a half by 11 letter size with two artboards. Gonna go ahead and click create down here. Okay, now that we have two of our artboards, I'm just gonna combine these two since we're making something like a magazine. Here's what we're going to do. And it's super simple. We're going to right click on the rectangle tool and then go into the ellipse tool. And I'm going to just hold shift and create some perfect circles. I'm also going to drag alt. And you can see that I'm making copies of three circles on the page. Now I'm gonna make sure that these three circles fill the entire page, something like this. Leave a healthy amount of margin here, but I think it's good if you just drag it out so that the three fits the page. Now we're gonna do the same thing. We have all three of these guys selected. I'm going to copy it down one more time and one more time after that. Now the important thing here guys is that you want all of these guys to be touching. So these two paths, they should be crossing, okay? Now, uh, we do actually want the entire page to be filled. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I have enough circles to cover the entire page. When I have that, I'm going to select everything here and just copy it onto the other page. Now, I do actually want these to kind of touch and I'm going to center everything on the two spreads. Once we have something like this, the next part is super easy. We're going to go ahead and select everything and then we're gonna hit Shift M. And that's gonna bring up the shape or pathfinder tool. And it's gonna allow us to combine different shapes as well as make a negative space as well. So. Here is the most interesting part. What we're going to do is just drag your mouse over these shapes. And you can see that when I do that, it's going to create a new shape. Now we can use this and create many, many different, different shapes, right? If we combine the three of these guys, it becomes a nice triangle. If you combine four of them together, it's gonna look like a nice flower. And if you drag something out like an L, it's gonna create a nice shape like that. So create the shapes that you like, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna keep it very simple and I'm just gonna create three different shape typologies. So one is the two connected. Maybe I'll do that one more time over here. And then one is the three connected. So I'll do a nice three right here. And then the rest are going to be ones. I also wanna mention that it's a great idea to keep your image in mind. So whatever image you're trying to get into these frames in mind when you're creating this. For example, if this is the image that I wanna put in the background, then it's a good idea to just make sure where everything's falling in. So I'm gonna make everything not a white fill. So I'm gonna select all my bubbles here and just make them a clear fill, so right here. And then I can visualize where the lines are falling in relation to the picture. So if I want both of my subject's eyes showing here, then I can see that, oh, well, great. This is where I should have my bubbles. And in the same way, I can delete the ones that I don't think is necessary. So I'm pretty happy with something like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and preserve what I have here. You can see that I've left two elements on the right just so that I can put something else in there. Um, and you'll see what that is in a little bit. Now, this Pathfinder tool is something that's super essential for anybody to have. If you're looking for other skills like this, I would recommend something like Skillshare, which is actually the sponsor of today's video. So when I was back in school, no one was really teaching us the software skills that we needed to be efficient at what needs to be done. And I have to figure out a lot of it on my own, which can really just slow down your process. And that's why I recommend Skillshare, especially for anyone trying to get ahead in their academic or professional career, whether you're working with things like Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, or even things like Premiere Pro, uh, Skillshare has thousands of resources that can help you improve faster than ever. I've been wanting to dive deeper into Adobe Premiere Pro for video editing and Skillshare has made that process so much easier. They have classes taught by pros who walk you through everything from basic editing to more advanced technique like color grading and multi-camera setup. And since it is back to school season, what better chance is there to sharpen your skills and get a head start? I was able to secure a one month free trial for the first 500 people to click on the link down in the description. So make sure you check that out, get your free one month trial and start learning today. No, 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 no. Okay, now we are in InDesign. So make sure you guys pause the video if you need to see what kind of document I'm creating, but it's pretty standard for most of the time when we're creating documents for our tutorials. 
Going back to Illustrator, we're going to just select everything here, do a control copy, or you can right click and just copy it. Go into InDesign, and then you can either copy in place or just copy it. Copy in place will make sure that it goes right to where you had it in Illustrator, which is great. So here, what we're going to do is you can see that everything is actually in a group. Now, this is super important, so make sure you guys listen up. Whatever you copy from Illustrator will come in as a single frame, meaning if I drag a image in here, it's going to populate everything in here. Now, that's probably not really what we want. What we're going to do is select everything here, go into Object, Path, and then we're going to release the compound path. Now, what we're going to do instead is make the left side into a compound path, so go into Object, path, compound path, and then doing the same thing with the right. So object, path, make compound path. Now what that means is that the left will be its own frame and the right will be another. So now we can go ahead and just drag and drop our image in and then I'm going to fit it. So right click fitting fit frame proportionally. That looks pretty good. It's actually exactly where I want it. And what we can also do is we want to get rid of the blue outline. So I'm going to change the stroke to paper, which is white. And I might want this to be just a tiny bit bigger, just to emphasize the shape of the circle. So you can see that already looks pretty good. And I have this on a five point stroke. So that's great on the left side of the page. We're going to try to do the same thing on the right. Now I'm going to try to make this guy on the bottom here, but I'm not really a big fan of the way that it's oriented. I kind of want the smaller circle on the left side and the diagonal to go from left to right this way. So what we're going to do is select the object, go into object, transform, and then we're going to flip this horizontally. So now you can see that this is exactly where I want it. All right, I'm going to leave this circle on the bottom as is, but I'm going to just import in some text. I'll make sure to have the sizes of the fonts that I use here, um, but these are all just simply created with the type tool. So uh, this still looks a little bit incomplete, so we're going to go ahead and just finish this up with some finishing touches. First thing I'm going to do is use the eyedropper tool, which is the shortcut key I. And I'm going to just sample a color that's fairly dark on the other side of the image. Now, I'm going to select the stroke and fill. Now, you can see that it's going to make this shape for me with the fill. I'm actually not a big fan of the two paths being together. It looks a little bit weird. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just go to Object, Path, and just release that compound path. I want this one to be a picture instead of just a giant fill. So what we're going to do is add a little bit of a text wrap onto this. We don't want the text and the shape overlapping on one another. So I'm going to go ahead and go into window and then we're going in to the text wrap. So make sure you switch that on. And then we're going to click on this one, wrap around object shape. I'm going to increase the margin around my shape here and I'm going to make sure that the text is not going to go over on the other side. Okay, so that looks pretty good. The reason why we made this into a different color though is we want to give it some sort of a highlight text. So for example, if I want to put this text over here and it's a nice quote by a very wise person and I want to put it down here as a highlight, you can see that I actually can't do that because there's a text wrap on this object. But you guys can see that it is actually wrapping around the object. Now, in order to counteract that, we're going to go right click text frame option and ignore text wrap. So make sure you check that on. Uh, and then I'm going to switch this back into the white. And then I'm going to just place it into a location that I think makes sense. So to finish it off, I'm just going to drag a image into my other frame. And then I'm going to fit this proportionally just so we have a nice little frame with a picture down there to finish off the page. So the last step is really using these little dots to connect everything together. And in order to do this, we really have to pick a complementary color. So a complementary color to red, that's very dark maroon red, is going to be a blue of some kind. So we're going to just lay these out. And that's it. So it's a super simple way to transform something from Illustrator into InDesign and then create an amazing layout from it. If you guys have learned anything from this tutorial, leave a like, subscribe, comment down below what you learned that was new, and if this is helpful at all, shoot me an email with what you create. I would love to see it. So with that said, check out our website. We have some cool templates on sale for you right there, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.